For more than a year now, Christians and Muslims have been locked in a vicious conflict in the Central African Republic, also called the CAR. The situation is so bad that the United Nations is referring to it as ethnic religious cleansing. And some say that what's happening in the CAR bears stark reminders to the genocide in Rwanda 20 years ago. The Central African Republic is a landlocked country with about 4.6 million people. It's mainly Christian with a Muslim minority, a French colony. It has had a series of unstable governments since it won independence in 1960. It's one of the poorest countries in Africa. In March of last year, the country was plunged into chaos when the president was ousted by the Seleka, a coalition of mostly Muslim rebels. Muslim fighters then committed atrocities against the Christians. French troops arrived late last year, forcing the Muslim fighters to retreat. In January, the Muslim president stepped down. For months now, Muslims have been targeted by Christian militias called the anti beleka who are bent on revenge. The violence has resulted in thousands of deaths, and the United Nations Refugee Agency estimates that about a million people have been forced to flee their homes. About 60% of them are children. Meanwhile, French troops and African peacekeepers have been unable to stop the violence. Joining me now from Paris to discuss the current situation in the Central African Republic is Martin Zagele. He was Prime Minister of the country from 2001 to 2003. Mr. Zagele, this is one of the most brutal conflicts the world has seen. Britain's Guardian newspaper reporting that children's throats have been slit, villagers have been raised, and young men have been thrown to crocodiles. That's how vicious it is. Uh, you are talking to a world audience right now. Can you give us an overview of how this conflict started? I would like to thank you uh, because I have the opportunity to speak to, to your auditors, to the people and auditors from America. And it is important to know that what is happening in our country is due to the collapse, the collapse of a country, of a state. We have really failed to build a state established on the law and order because the things raised after the last elections the elections have been very well uh, very badly uh, led and then after some kind of uh, rebellions political uh, rebellions military rebellions uh, began in the country and mostly in the northeastern part of the country the regions were, which were usually forgotten by the central power of our country and then after, when they come, they take power. They have no ability to rule and to govern a country. And they, 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 they start very huge uh, uh, violations of human rights. And then after, some people who usually uh, are in the villages and their main duty is to, to protect people from highways, men, highways, uh, 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 criminals and so on, they aggregate and then fight against Seleka. And it's why at, the f at, at some time when uh, we see what happens in our country, it, li it looks like a confessional uh, conflict. But it's not confessional since there is no uh, 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 Christian hierarchy who call to fight Muslim people. And there is no Muslim hierarchy who call to fight against uh, Christian people. It's, instrumentalization of political conflict between people who lost power and people who gain power. Okay, the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has warned that this conflict is so vicious that it could spiral into genocide and effectively cause a partition in the country. There has been talk of ethnic cleansing. How bad is the situation? As I, as I try to explain uh, right now, is not. Uh, I, I don't think that is a confessional conflict because if it is a confessional conflict, uh, it's 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 uh, it seems that it's uh, it it is that uh, people who lead religious communities call their members to fight against others. It's not the it is not the case. The case is that the to be frank to be direct. Former President General Bozizé, when he lost the power by the rebellion of Seleka, which was mostly Muslims, he called people to fight against Muslims because he said that Chad backed the Muslims of Seleka, and then Seleka 
overthrown him. And then people fight against Muslim because for the people, Muslim are both Seleka. They are all Seleka. It's why it gives that confessional aspect to the country, uh, to the conflict. But fundamentally, it's a political problem. It's a problem of alterance, of political alterance, which has been failed because the country has failed. Is, uh, the country is out of, uh, 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 out of the, the, the right way of building democracy and building state uh, in, the, uh, in, 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 in the country. It's why we, 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 we at uh, last December, there were many, many problems in the country. Many people have been killed, yes. Two, one or two million people have been displaced from their homes. Many people have flewed from, uh, the, to the other countries. It, it is true. But it's not, uh, an ethnic, it's not ethnical conflict. It's not confessional conflict. It's instrumentalization of poor people, of very poor people, by politicians who lost power, and they want to come back to power by fighting people who look like Muslim or okay. Christian or so on. It's, it, Mm -hmm. Okay, you call it a political problem. What is the current government under Catherine Samba Panza doing now to resolve this conflict? I think it's uh, very important to point out that uh, Madame Samba Panza has no power, you know, since she has no armed forces under her directions. He, he, he has no, it's a king without kingdom, without power, without nothing. There is no army in our country, no police, no administration, no local administration. How can, I, can, can she do to, 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 to govern the country? You see, you know that in every country in the world, you have to have law and order. You have to respect order in order to build the economy, to build living, but, uh, good living for all our inhabitants and so on. If there are no order, if you are no, you are you are nobody to, to, to maintain the order in our country, in your country, what can you do exactly? Because international forces, they are there by the mandate given by the United Nations Resolution uh, 2127. It's right, but they cannot be in all the country. So I think it's very important for the international opinion to know that we are in the country without army, and it's important to give the means to the, that government to have some, uh, some armed forces, armed personnel with them to help them to put security in, some, in the main part of the country. Because oh. we are, we are, the country is greater than France, Belgium and Luxembourg uh, together. It's a big country with only 4.5 billion inhabitants, uh, as you put it at the beginning of our talk. But if the country is great, if it, uh, is, uh, it is not well uh, inhabited. So you need more means to, 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 to cover the country, to, 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 to control the country, uh, because we are border with six countries, and all the six countries has also sort of internal problems. So it's very, we are like a sponge. Well, a sponge will carry all the water splendoring from the other countries. Okay, Mr. Zgela, you talk about international forces being in uh, CAR. There are French forces there. There are African peacekeeping forces there. And as you just pointed out, they can't be all over the country. But even in those parts of mm. the country where they are deployed, why have they been so ineffective in stopping this violence? There are many things to do, to do at the same time. Uh, the first thing is to apply to apply without, without, uh, uh, without um, discussion, without ambiguity, the mandate given by the United Nations resolution. All people who are with arms, with guns, has to be disarmed, without exception. If you have militias from Antibalaka or Seleka with arms, with guns, with gun, heavy guns in the country, and the state has no army, no police. How can peace be settled? So I think that the first thing to do is to disarm people, to, to, uh, to, to, to applicate the mandate given by the United Nations resolution very, very strongly. And after, is, if, 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 since the resolution of the United Nations has uh, forbidden to the country to have to import guns and to build an army, I think we have to, 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 to change the things. We have to discuss with the United Nations to help the country to have an army. Since the country has no army, the government can do nothing to help international forces to bring peace back. Even if the, 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 the peacekeeping mission came 
in, in, in next September. There are 12,000 people only. They cannot control and patrol all the big country has as a spin uh, uh, a few minutes ago. You know, you tell us that there is no law and order, the government has no control, international forces that are in the country cannot stop the violence. It sounds and seems like the Central African Republic is a failed state. Is it a failed state? Yeah, I think that the country is a failed state and it started very, very far in the past. You know, you have put out, you have pointed when you resumed at the beginning of our uh, talk that uh, since our independence, we have many, many, we have, we have faced many problems. And I think we have a real problem of nation building and state building. And I think the, 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 keep, uh, the uh, peacekeeping mission has not only to stop at the recovery of uh, at, uh, security problems, they have to go faster. They have to go to help the country in the, in the uh, they have to, 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 to help Central African government, Central African people to rebuild the state, to rebuild a nation, because the problem between Muslims and Christians and so on are very, uh, are, are created artificially because uh, uh, citizenhood uh, is not very, very strong in our country. We have to, 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 to learn to live in our country as citizen of a country before being Muslim or Christian or so on. You know, according to the United Nations, hundreds of thousands of people in the Central African Republic have been displaced. There are tens of thousands of people who fled to neighboring countries. Malaria has broken out. HIV uh, has broken out as well. There are no access to medicines. What can you tell us about the humanitarian situation in the country? What is happening in our country is very, very hard to see. It's very hard to, to monitor. You know, when you come at the international airport of Bangui, with the, 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 the single airport, international airport in a country in the main city of Bangui, in the field of the airport, you have, you have many, many, many thousand people living there, living there in a very hard situation. You have not to go in the South country to see that. It's at the airport when you are, you are, your plane is taking down. So I think our country is a, is a very harm situation, a very difficult situation. Many people are living in the bush like animals. There are no good water. People, uh, uh, women are, are giving life in, in wild uh, savannas like, uh, like animals. And it's very hard. And when you go to Chad, Sudan, Cameroon, and so on, you have many, many, many Central African people living there with very, very great difficulty. So it's why I think that the purpose to keep, uh, to give the government the means to have, to restart, to restart the army, the national army, police, and so on, to restart, to, to, to resettle administration in local cities inside the country is a very important goal to reach very quickly. Because if you have security in the villages okay. and, and in and, uh, and town, you can bring people back in their villages, in their living areas, and I think uh, peace will uh, come back very quickly. If not, we are very, uh, I am very, um, I'm fearing that things will uh, go uh, very bad in the future. Martin Zagale, thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you very much. We are going to take a break right now. When we come back, a Hollywood actor and activist talks about other flashpoints in Africa and what's being done to ease the pain and suffering there. Stay with us here on The Heat.